This is uh, page 46, question 1, and this is equilibrium of particles uh, and friction. So a particle of weight 10 newtons rests in, a, in rough contact with a plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the value of coefficient of friction if the particle is just about to slip down the plane. And that's the important thing. It is just about to slip down the plane. So question 1, page 46. Okay. Now, we have a slope of angle 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Here we have our little particle or blob or whatever. And it is a weight 10 newtons. And it is a rough slope. It's a little roughness there. Um, it is about to slip down the plane, which means it will move up the plane. So I'm going to put a force here for my friction. And we know from before F equals mu times R. Is that coming up? Yeah, it is. Sorry? This is a particle of weight 10 newtons. Question 1, page 46. Uh, okay, so we need to calculate the value of the coefficient of friction. So, coefficient of friction, mu equals our question. We know the weight is 10 newtons. It's split going down the plane. We're going to draw another little diagram just of the particle. So, 10 newtons is split like this and like this. And we've got our F, which is mu R. And going up, we have our normal reaction. We can add that into this diagram here. This is our normal reaction. Okay. I think that's all the work we need to do on those forces. We now have got to put in our values. That's 10. Uh, we're going to turn through 30. So that's 10 cos 30, uh, 30. And this is 10 sine 30. OK. 10 sine 30 is going up the plane. 10 sine 30 equals mu r. And looking in this direction, R equals 10 cos 30. I think that's about it. Can anyone see anything missing? No? So 10 sine 30 equals mu. Now instead of R, I'm going to use this R times 10 cos 30. So I've got actually 10 sine 30 over cos over 10 cos 30 equals mu. That's actually going to just cancel and become equals tan 30. And tan 30 is 1 over, no, root, it's root 3. Root 3. Tan 30 equals root 3. What's your question? Root 3 over 3. Root 3 over 3. Okay, so 1 over root 3. Okay. So that's a straightforward example, and that's actually, that's become tan 30. It doesn't always become tan 30. Okay. Um, so we're going to now look at question 7. Actually, I'll stop this. We'll do that as a separate one. Okay, we're going to look at question 7 now, which is a block of weight 20 newtons on a rough plane at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Um, we've been given the coefficient of friction, but we need to work out the horizontal force. So let's, this is a similar question, because we've got another slope. This is question 7, page 47. We've got another slope here at 30 degrees. And here we have a block here, and its weight now is 20 newtons. We've got a horizontal force required to just to prevent the block. So I'm going to assume that the horizontal force is like a finger pushing on the block. Okay. And if it's mu equals 0 0.25 of quarter, here we've got R. Okay. This becomes slightly more difficult. We're going to look at part A, which says 
to prevent the block from slipping down the plane. So the block wants to slip down the plane, it's going to move down, it's got to have friction going up. So again our friction is up. This will even actually, instead of writing F for friction, we'll just leave that as mu R because we want this horizontal force F and we can use F there. looks a bit neater. Okay, now that's a horizontal force we're going to have to resolve that one as well as the weight. So if we're looking, um, this time we'll start with perpendicular to the plane. I'll do a little sub-diagram here. So we've got perpendicular, we've got R, we've got 20 cos 30, and we've got 20 sine 30. We're going to have to have the components of this force. I'm going to bring the force coming out this way. I might need to use another pencil. Let me just... All right, so we're going to use the force is going to go out like that, which means it's that there is our angle 30. Okay, so going up the plane, that's going to be F and it's going to be cos 30. And now the force is split going up and it's going to go that way in line and down. Okay. And down the plane is going to be F sine 30. Are we all happy with that? How does it show it going down? How do I know it's going down? Um, if I draw another little diagram just of F, just of F here, oh, yeah. but pulling out of the block, I know it needs to split. Yeah. It's tricky, like that and like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that there is my 30. Okay, so let me just move that down the page. If I resolve now my forces going up, I know that. R equals F sine 30 plus 20 cos 30. Now actually, thinking about this, it may have been better because we want to find out the value of F for us to resolve horizontally and vertically. Because if we do this and then this way, we've got 20 sine 30 cos Oh no, maybe not. Plus, no, we've also we missed out the mu r over here. Mu r. Here we have 20 sine 30 equals mu r plus f cos 30. So we've ended up with two equations, both with two unknowns and we'll have simultaneous equations to solve. The unknown mu is 0.25? Yes, so the unknowns are R and F. Mu is 0 0.25. Put that in, 0 0.25. Okay, it's a little bit tedious, but then we can do that. The trick to this question is obviously setting up your diagram. And because it says you're just going to prevent the block from slipping down the plane, you need to make sure your mu r is moving up the plane. For part b, it asks to make it begin to make it just begin to slide up the plane. You're going to do the same thing again, but your mu r is going to face down the plane. All right, stop recording there, and you can start. So after I've resolved it again, but this time going up and down horizontal vertical, so not in line with the plane, I find that in the top equation, I've got mu, which we know is 0 0.25. Let me write that in, 0 0.25. Um, I've got R, but I've got no F. And that's quite important, no F. Because it's F for that force, not friction. There is friction, mu R. Now, we can easily work out R because it's one equation and one unknown. We can use our value for R that we store in the calculator 
to put that in this R and this R and actually work out F. And it will be quicker. Both ways will work, though. Okay.